Welcome back to Galaxy Tenants. My name is Carly, and co-producing this episode is my husband, Jay. Episode 10 features a conversation with more than the music host, Stacey Newman, and we feature a couple of tracks from the Drunken Hearts. Stacey, can you tell us a little bit about, about what you do and how you got started doing it? Sure. Well, I've led kind of an interesting path to the amazing privilege of hosting a show where I get to talk to pretty fantastic folks. I, I kind of lucked my way into it, in my opinion, but I enjoy it so much. So, you know, I try to not minimize that as much as possible. I host a show called More Than the Music, and it's produced by Reach High Media and the Heartland Network, which is a nationally broadcast over-the-air network. But we are currently working on putting everything on digital. So trying to modernize a little bit. It's 2020. We want people to be able to watch online. And we, we had a new president of the company come in about two years ago now. And like we were, we did a lot of broadcasting before, but no original content. So when he came in with his, you know, production and music industry background, he wanted to focus in on that stuff, which lucky for me, he wanted me to host a show. So that's what I get to do. It's pretty awesome. I was a video editor before that. And I just happened to be around when he came into the company and he liked me and thought I could do it. So I think you're a great person to host a show. Well, thanks. Like, yeah, you're, you got a great personality for it. And uh, you're very disarming, I think, in conversation, too. So I think when people, you know, are, are sitting down for an interview, you're the perfect person to sit across from if, if you're going to share some stuff. Okay. Um, of a course. Compliment. Tell us, tell us about the format of your show, which I find to be interesting because, I mean, the title says it all. But when you see these music shows, it's always interviews coupled with performances or cuts from live performances. Um, this is strictly conversation, isn't it? Well, we do show music videos and oftentimes live videos that the um, artists and their management camps will provide. My current company doesn't let us do live performances on the show, like specifically for us because of sync rights, which cost a whole lot of money and we're pretty low budget. So we kind of stick to whatever is provided to us, which is unique in the in the realm of music stuff. But my hope is that, you know, moving forward, if we do go online, the sync rights thing becomes a lot more easy to deal with. They don't have a stronghold on people playing live music. If it's on the Internet, it's only for broadcast. The FCC and all of that stuff is pretty strict. And especially because we're over the air. So that's, that's something I'm very un, unfamiliar with. Stay online, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems to be like the Wild West of, of uh, permissions. Although, you know, I've had a couple of videos where like Facebook has silenced or muted portions of them because of copyright, even yeah. though I have the permissions. And I, but that said, I have no way of communicating those permissions to Facebook. There's no form of submission or anything like that. So I've had to link to where you can listen to the full podcast from and debate whether or not to have it auto generate on Facebook and stuff. But yeah. so I, there is some of that where you would still have, would have an issue, but if they're doing a live performance for you in your space, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be the same as them providing you with material or a track or something, or is that not the case? You would think, um, honestly, it gets pretty muddy and I don't know all of the, specifics. Um, my boss does, which thank goodness for him, because we probably could have gotten our asses sued a few times. But I mean, I have people show up with a guitar to interviews on a regular basis. And it's like, oh, sorry, yeah, not performing today. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's weird, but sure. And they put it away. But it's it's such a weird thing, because the companies that they sign with, as far as like the record label or the management, or there's so many different things, PR companies even, will have contracts that they've signed. So even if the artist is all about it for over the air. And I know Facebook is cracking down. Like you said, it gets, it gets pretty hairy. Um, but again, I don't fully understand the specifics of it all. So I can't really. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. Where on TV does your show air? I know the Heartland network who carries the Heartland network and what regions is that being broadcast in? 
Well, we're currently all over the country. It's just a matter of whether or not we have an affiliate somewhere near you. So because we are mostly over the air, um, the Heartland Network specifically, so it's a little confusing. My show is produced by the Heartland Network and it airs on the Heartland Network every Tuesday and Sunday at eight o'clock Eastern time. It's confusing because we are over the air on Heartland, but also we are syndicated. So as of October of last year, 2019, we picked up, I don't even know how many more syndicated spots. I know that on the Heartland Network, we were in something around like 45 to 55 million households. And then when we got syndicated, we added, I don't even know how many more. And it's still like, it seems like every other day we get another email that's like syndicated here, blah, 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 which is great. Terrifying, but great. Um, so I don't really have solid numbers for that, but uh, it's accessible pretty much anywhere. And especially now because we're doing the video on demand stuff, it should be watchable. We don't have every episode up yet, but we're working on it. Uh, it's me personally who's going in and like making the graphics and linking these things for the VOD site. So when I get time, I add to it, but um, they can or everybody can pick it up at watchheartlandtv.com. Perfect. So I've seen I've seen a handful of your interviews, and you do a, you do a great job. Like I said, you're very disarming, and and I think one of the things that that is is very telling about an interviewer is how calm and forthcoming a guest is. And you get people in here, and in you know, in your studio that we're talking what Kevin Costner, <laughs> Kevin Bacon, yeah. so, and it almost comes off as like. They're friends of yours. They're just sitting there, and it's a very mellow vibe as opposed to a lot of the, you know, Hollywood-style interviews and stuff. So I wanted to give you kudos first on not only the, you. of course, not only the level of guests, but your ability to connect with those guests. Who are some of your favorite folks that you've interviewed? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's funny. I had a feeling this question would come up, and you think that I would. I even thought about it this morning. I was like, oh, he's going to ask that. I should have a list of names ready. Maybe just mention a couple of the ones that, you know, off the top of your head. Okay, so there are different kinds of favorite to me. So it's amazing to me that I got to talk to Kevin Costner. It's amazing to me that I got to talk to Kevin Bacon. But, and no offense to the Kevins, but <laughs> some of my favorite interviews have honestly been, like, people who are just up and coming that really surprised me. Um, and what's extra funny about the whole situation is that Heartland Network is a country music network, like, very specifically. We're kind of the over-the-air competitor to CMT, which we have a focus on more like classic country and like old school stuff, which I think is cool because I'm obsessed with vintage things. But, you know, other than like early 90s Garth Brooks and like Travis Tritt, I didn't listen to a lot of country music. It's just never really been in my purview. So when they told me I was going to do, do a show like interviewing musicians, I'm like, hell yeah, that's awesome. And then they're like, but it's going to be country music. And I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's given me, I think, an opportunity to get to know a whole new genre. And also because I had never really worked in front of a camera before, um, I got to work through like the nerves of working in front of a camera while talking to people who I wasn't immediately nervous to talk to so like I feel like if I had been sat down in front of like Nick Cave or something I would have gone into that pooping my pants and like I can't I wouldn't have been able to like get a good interview out of it because of that so I, I think that I've been able to learn a lot while I'm doing this and that's been an absolute blessing and it's given me a new appreciation for an entire genre and like genres within the genre of music that I just had kind of written off before this, which is kind of crappy to say. I hope my guests don't listen to this and get offended. But um, Oh, don't worry. No one listens to this podcast. <laughs> they will. They will. You're awesome. <laughs> I was going to ask you about the whole country thing, though, because I don't when I think of country music, I don't think of you. And yeah. I don't I don't know you as really digging country music so much. So I think that's kind of cool, though. It also like you said, you're learning as you go, but it pushes you into this realm and gives you a, a whole different approach and skill set. Totally, totally. I just, I just, as like a music lover in general, which is why I think Joel wanted me to make the show, I, I'm just glad to find the appreciation there. Like, uh, there's this guy, Paul Bogart. He's great. His songs are great. He's got an amazing voice. He's a super nice dude. I got to go, well, I've interviewed him a handful of times now, but for my show... 
Um, Cause I do other stuff with Heartland other than just more than the music. But in, I think it was October of 2019, maybe November, I went to this private ranch because he's he's um, an American Quarter Horse Association world champion. He does roping and like it's like actual rodeo shit. Like this guy's <laughs> a real cowboy, man. And he's got a couple of kids. One of them's like three. And so I was super nervous because I got bucked off of a horse when I was a Girl Scout and like. I don't know, probably 1994 or something. And so I've been nervous to ride horseback, you know? So I go out there being told, you know, we're you're going to learn how to rope and we'll talk to Paul about his music and then we'll do all this fun stuff. Because the whole more than the music thing, it's really intended to be more than just talking about music. So we're kind of trying to work toward that format, getting back to what you asked me earlier. So uh, we go out there to this private ranch. It's amazing. They've got like all the practice, like, cows or bulls or whatever they're called and practice steer i think i don't know <laughs> don't quote me i'm sure they talk about it on the show and i don't actually watch my show so <laughs> it makes me cringe i can't watch myself it's very unlikely i'll actually listen to this once you get it edited but my people <laughs> will post it all over our socials so that's cool so anyway i they like they're like all right you ready and i'm like ready for what because we had just done the roping thing. I thought we were like, you know, whatever. I was going to go watch him do that. And cameras run around and get B-roll. Nope. They wanted me to get on a horse. <sighs> so I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. And he's like, no, it's cool. It's cool. You're, they put me on this horse named Doc, which I remember, which I'm very impressed with myself for. And as I get up there, I'm like shaking. I, I even dressed up like a cowboy and everything for the, for the interview because I had this awesome cowboy shirt I drunkenly bought off of eBay like two years ago. Finally had a reason to wear it. So exciting. And uh, put on the cowboy boots and everything. And I get up on dock and I'm just like so nervous. And he's like trying to teach me how to move him around with the reins and stuff. And it's just, it's all very overwhelming. And I think he could tell that I was nervous, like visibly, because he goes, it's okay, Stacy. My three-year-old rides this horse. You're fine. <laughs> I'm like, ah, okay. Paul's cool. Paul's cool. He can even make fun of me on my own show. He wins. <laughs> so that was that was a favorite interview. And well, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I feel like you're glossing over the ride itself. Did, oh. <laughs> I mean, you you appear to have all your limbs and. Actually, it's really funny. I haven't put this together before, but um, I drove back from Nashville that evening. I, I live in Chattanooga, which is about two hours south of Nashville. And it was raining when I got home. And because I had the cowboy boots on, which I don't know if you're a cowboy boot guy, but they have no tread whatsoever. It's basically just like a flat surface. It's why people can boot scoot, you know, the boot scoot and boogie. That's like a real thing. But it was raining and I had had like all of my wardrobe in the car. So I'm running back and forth, back and forth from the car in the rain, trying to get my stuff in the house just so I could like, you know, change out of my cowboy outfit and take a shower because I was covered in dust. And I ended up slipping and falling on the stairs outside of my own house. And I injured myself that way, but not so on the horse. Indirectly, the horse. you got injured from that experience. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. I'm yeah. glad it wasn't on the horse. <laughs> yeah, me too. Doc was very gentle. And also the gig that they had me do, apparently, I, I still don't remember the terminology. I really should. I recorded like from like my phone on me the whole time because I knew we couldn't mic everybody and have it picked up wirelessly while we were doing it. And in, I had intended to use that audio for the show, but it just was too crackly. But yeah, they the so when you rodeo or when you rope in the rodeo, they do they do a uh, a pair thing. So it's like him and his friend who were like legitimately professional at this. And then me in the middle of the thing. And basically you have someone stand in the middle on a horse just to keep the steer like going the right direction for them to like rope it and whatever. And these steer have been through this so many times. It's like they were running out of the gate thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. We get it. We've done this a million times. And then they go back around and get back in the line. So yeah, I basically just had to sit there on the horse. It was fine. It was the easiest thing ever. He had me chase one of them, and it was the slowest practice steer that they have. And Doc and I just kind of, like, trotted along behind it. Everybody was laughing at us, but it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, to me, I was going to ask you, like, what, what one of your more obscure interviews was. And I guess that would have also probably fit the mold, that one, well, what you just described. But 
if you want to talk obscure and someone I'm proud to have talked to, and this is good for us because we Detroit folks, I got to interview Mitch Ryder um, of the Detroit Wheels. And I like it was one of the very few interviews that I pushed for myself and the people like on my team were like, oh, what is that doesn't really fit our format. But I was like, he's here. He's willing. I'm going to have him on my show. Like it's happening. So we actually brought him into the studio in Chattanooga. He and his wife moved from Detroit to Georgia. Um, I think he said like 10 years ago. Honestly, I don't remember. It was like a year and a half ago that I talked to him. But um, they just, you know, they're snowbirds. They wanted to move south where it's warmer. And he was quite an influential figure in Detroit and in music in general. I mean, he was one of the original fucking can i swear on this i'm sorry absolutely one of, okay good one of the original like rock and roll and dudes man like he was he's he's a cool cat um and we got to have him on i think he i think he was on season two but he might have even been late season one we only have the two seasons so far and now season three is kind of put on hold because i can't interview anybody how was the interview itself with him fabulous um he's he's an older gent and um, made it pretty clear that he doesn't do a lot of interviews and didn't care to be doing an interview. But at the very, very end of the interview, I had an- asked him all the questions that I had for him. And like we'd had, gosh, we talked for probably an hour and a half, all told. But I just was, you know, if he wanted to keep talking, I wasn't going to stop. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, he's like, well, that's all you got? I'm like, well, I mean, if you want to keep talking, I got more questions for you. I can come up with some stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So then we get like legit halfway into me even just asking the next question. And he goes, if we sit here much longer, I'm going to start passing gas. And I'm like, okay, well, we can, we can just call it. And like before I could do my like, okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been really fun talking to you or whatever, like my outro thing. He's like unmiking and like <laughs> lining it. <laughs> but, uh, super awkward. Yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, other folks that I've talked to that I just, that might be kind of more in line with what you guys do. Cause I really, I've, the whole point of my show was because Heartland does have kind of a older audience. So we wanted to bring in a later night show, eight o'clock, not like late night, late night, but like prime time with bands that would draw a younger audience to the network. So that was the goal. And we still do a lot of, like, the the people that older folks are there for, which is fine. But I've gotten a lot of really great Americana acts on. I had Paul Cawthon on recently. Um, I've talked to Molly Tuttle a couple times. And she's Jeez. incredible, dude. Incredible. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, she blows my mind, man. She Her playing and her, her output and her demeanor and just, oh, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Oh, just incredible all the way around. I mean, she's a great person. She's so talented. And I just found out the last time that I talked to her that her and Billy Strings used to be roommates. Like, they came up together, and now he's out there killing it. Well, not out there right now because COVID, but... um, Another Michigan guy, though. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I got to talk to him. He and I have a few mutual friends. We smoked a doobie together before one of his shows at one point, and I was like, man... When are you going to be on my show? Because it's always like the most awkward interactions that I get to have with Billy Strings. So (laughs) the first time I somehow lucked out to be able to go to this thing during Americana Fest in Nashville called the Luck Mansion, which is the whole, you know, the Luck Reunion. I'm sure you're familiar with that in Austin. Um, They do that at uh, Willie Nelson's ranch in Lukenbach, Texas every year. And there's now a Nashville spinoff of that because, you know, why not capitalize? Now I sound like a jerk. But they they bought this house in Nashville and they call it the Luck Mansion. So every year during Americana Fest and then some other times, they've got these like really cool casual like things, like little shows. And then they've got like a tattoo artist and just it's it's so cool. And you have to have a pass to be able to get in. It's like they don't care that I'm Stacey Newman and I have a TV show. It, they only cared that I managed to have a pass that, you know, said I could come in. So I got to go to that. It was awesome. And Billy Strings was playing. I had never heard him live before. And he blew my mind. Like, seriously, it was crazy. He's amazing. 
you witnessed the future of bluegrass music in that moment. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Because for a second there, there's some great bands out there, but where is this thing going? And then boom, Billy Strings comes along and it's like, oh, that's that's the future. Got it. Totally. Yes. And I think that Molly Tuttle is a big part of that, too. Um, Absolutely. So I after the show and I had been with my friends that, that know Billy from like before he like really hit big. And so she, my friend Anne and I were outside and, um, you know, everything was wrapping up and he had gone. They're like, I was like, man, I would love to get him on my show. And she's like, just go ask him. And so I like go outside and I'm so awkward, man. Like I'm the most awkward person ever. And so only I- in your head. <laughs> you're so comfortable and you're so uh, you're so chill. But in your head, you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> so I I, uh, I follow. Uh, well, I didn't like follow him outside, but like he had gone out. And so I like go out and they're like loading up gear. And he's like his bands all like, well, not band, but like the couple people that were with him, like loading stuff up. And he's like around the corner. And I like see his long hair like swing out from behind one of the trucks. And I'm like, oh, there he is. So I go over and I'm like, hey, Billy. And he's literally got his pants around his ankles. He was like, he was changing clothes, I guess, because he gets like real into the show and gets sweaty, you know, like people do. Mm -hmm. Hey, hold on. Hold on one second. Are you fucking kidding me? What? So, uh, someone's mowing my lawn right now. Oh. I I mow my own lawn, so that's surprising to me. Um, but it will affect the audio. My lawn is about yeah, this, like it. a 10 by 10 space, so it shouldn't take long. Let me call you back <laughs> okay. in about 10 or 15 minutes. Is that yeah, okay with no you? Worries. Totally cool. Ones who are mad to live, mad to talk Mad to be safe, desirous of everything at the same time 
Ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing But burn, burn, burn like fabulous yellow Roman candles Exploding like spiders across the stars And I wonder if I'll ever make it home again And I wonder if I'll ever make it home again And I wonder if I'll ever make it home again I wonder if I'll ever make it home again So we left off with you telling me about coming around a corner of a trailer and oh. Billy Strings' pants were around his ankles. Yeah. <laughs> what a story to be interrupted by technical difficulties. <laughs> it, it ended there, too. It was like, and his pants were around his ankles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty much the whole story. He was he was very just Billy Strings and like Shelly said, yeah, man, that, sound, that sounds really cool. We should set that up. And uh, his girlfriend is his manager and she's super nice um every time i've met her she's been really nice but also like when you try to like set anything up she's she's a bulldog man she's and i mean that in a good way if she listens to this i mean that in a good way but um yeah That's she what definitely managers is, are like, supposed to do they're supposed yeah. to be that filter and not commit to anything until they know that the product is strong and yeah. i'm sure so many people have got to wander up to to these folks the musicians and whatnot after shows and be like, hey, I've got a blah, blah, blah. Do you want yeah. to be featured on it or whatever? Yeah, totally. Usually all I have to do is flaunt my numbers and people are like, oh, well. <laughs> but it doesn't always work out that way. Also, he was like about to embark on that giant tour that like blew him up. So like he he barely was in Nashville for like a year. So yeah, haven't had him on yet. Maybe he'll hear this and be convinced can you imagine being billy strings and just when you break and really like the floodgates open for like popularity and like mainstream attention there's a pandemic dude yeah can, there's so many artists that i feel like we're just on the brink and like this is where we're at i think tyler childers falls into that category too um he again was somebody that i've got like friend connections to and we were like working on getting him on the show but he was also like getting really popular while we were trying to do it and yeah, pandemic, here we are. So, it's I mean, crazy. on the plus side, I guess they're probably more likely to talk to me now that they're stuck at their houses. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I've got other work to do and then hopefully I'll be able to get that stuff set up. I'm, I'm curious. So I, I visited you maybe 15, 15 years ago down in Chattanooga and you... I forgot about that. Yeah. And, and you've been living there since correct yeah i've moved away from that place um that was a cool spot though man that was when i lived with nick bays i think that's, that's correct yeah it was like a little like farmhouse or something if i remember yeah, correctly yeah it was a little farm well really a glorified garden but um we had chickens <laughs> too so i guess it counts as a farm you but it was sick it was awesome i i missed that place but yeah the the landlord slash like farm owner guy was real weird and did a lot of drugs and it didn't yeah. really like it didn't really work out it was very cheap rent for a little while though and nick and i could watch all of the fucking america's next top model or whatever that we wanted to so that was cool uh, <laughs> tell me what you love about chattanooga oh goodness well my job mostly is the reason i'm still here but uh if i'm gonna be less rude about it i i i do love that i can be like like where i live and I, I mean, you, you're my friend on socials, but people listening to this don't know. Like, I can post a picture of my gorgeous backyard that looks like I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm legit, like, seven minutes from, like, a downtown area that, when we're not all under quarantine, has lots of bars and venues and good food. The food scene here is incredible. And I'm lucky to know a few wonderful chefs. It's just, uh, it's, it's really good for that. And while we were chatting offline here from this call... Uh, I was bragging about my internet that I'm spoiled by because we've got what is purported to be the fastest internet in the entire West. They call us the Silicon Valley of the South because we have municipally owned 
internet that is gigabyte speeds to everyone's home within the city limits and elsewhere also, but they can't really brag about that because it's not consistently everywhere. So for like $58 a month, I have gigabit internet for all the things and it's really wonderful and I'm spoiled. My stuff doesn't just like freeze up. No offense. No offense, Denver. The one thing I do want to ask about Chattanooga is you guys just recently got hit with some tornadoes. We did, yes. How is the town doing? How is it recovering? Um, well, it, to be fair, uh, about a month prior to us getting hit with them, Nashville got hit pretty hard and it took out like major areas of the city. And that's not to downplay what happened here by any means. But um, I mean, I, I had a couple friends here that lost their homes. Um, I mean, it was no joke. Luckily for me, it was on the other side of town, but that, you know, doesn't help the other folks. And I had a lot more friends that had some damage to their houses and going to have to move and deal with all that. So it's just, it's it's a mess, man. The ones that hit in Nashville uh, about a month before here um, took down one of my very favorite music venues, like completely destroyed it except for one wall that just has a mural that says, we believe in Nashville. So that was kind of beautiful in its own terrible way but they're they had insurance and they're getting it rebuilt and everybody that i've talked to down here that's had any major damage same thing it's just gonna be a matter of like insurance companies you know taking their sweet time doing what they do and getting it figured out but for the most part at this point like while we're talking today i think it's been a week and a half since the tornadoes hit here and for the most part everybody's got their power back and they're you know getting back to normal so that helps. But like in the middle of a pandemic to have a tornado knock everything out, it's just like, seriously, universe, like what is happening? It is crazy because that comes at a time where, you know, everybody's stocking their freezers and really preparing and really buying in bulk. And if you're if you don't have electricity and, you know, I, mean, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, hopefully you guys have a strong community down there to support them and everybody gets back on their feet. For sure, for sure. And that that's one thing, too. Like, one of my coworkers had some trees fall on her house, and, you know, everybody was on our Slack thing being like, can we help you? Can we help you? Like, one guy's like, I have a chainsaw. I'll be right over if you need it. She's like, there's already 10 people out here with chainsaws. It's okay. Like It's weird, too, because then you're, you're helping, but you also have to, like, social distance in the middle of, like, helping in a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's a lot, dude. It's a lot. That is, that is a lot. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks. Me too. I, um, yeah, it's tough, man. I feel, I feel terrible for everybody. It just, it just makes you feel helpless. Like when there's, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of an empath and I, I have, I struggle with like other people going through stuff when I can't like pitch in to help. I don't know. We don't need to get into my fucking neuroses right now, but, um, I just, I don't know. It makes me feel really terrible to just like sit here and have power and like know the people across town are completely struggling and there's nothing I can do. Right. We're being told to stay home and shelter in place. And at the same time, you want to go out and help folks. And it's like, yeah, uh, well, I'm sorry that happened. Uh, The one thing I will end with on a positive note is me asking you to please do a podcast. I think it would be a really great thing. I think I, I, we talked about it a little bit offline and whatnot, but please, you, you got to do a podcast. You're, uh-huh. you're entertaining and yeah, right. Oh, go ahead. Continue. You're so sweet. Thanks. <laughs> but, but seriously, with, you know, with the way things are going, it could be a, a quite a while before we see any sort of normalcy and getting back face to face with people. And uh, I find what you do to be very entertaining. And I would love to listen to a podcast if you output one. Well, thanks, bud. For real. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. And I, I hope to be able to get it together. I really do. When this whole thing first started and we were all going to be quarantined and we have Man, we had two or three different music festivals lined up. I was going to get to talk to Rufus Wainwright, who's like, I've idolized him since I was like in fifth grade. I was so stoked. And then they're like, oh, music festivals are not happening this year. And it's like, ah, so frustrating. Uh, But anyway, I sent out a bunch of Instagram messages to people that I've had on my show in the past and some people that like I had hoped to have on the show. And so many of them were like, hell yeah, let's do something. It'd be so awesome. And then like, my regular job, which is not the show, unfortunately, uh, kind of took over and I haven't had time to like get anything worked out. But the possibility is certainly there. It's just a matter of making it happen and getting the damn time. I think but, you've got the resources and you've got um, the, the timing now is and I've found this just through through starting Galaxy Tenants that everybody's available right now. No mm-hmm. one's busy. 
There's no exactly. Yeah. So the doors are just wide open to interview people that you may not typically have the opportunity to, to have conversations with. We're at this point right now with all the networks and with the company that produces my show to be able to like, we don't have to worry about the FCC. We don't have to worry about, um, you know, a show cutting down to exactly 2230 to be able to air. Like we can put whatever we want up on that VOD stuff. And it's, um, it's an overwhelming blessing for sure. What's a VOD? Can you explain that? Oh, sorry. Um, Video on demand. So basically we've set up this, so we're doing it by channel, by network. Um, we've got six networks, and most of them will have their own VOD channel. So basically, from a user standpoint, um, you'll be able to log into one of our websites, which currently are mostly just a regular website. But if you go to watchheartlandtv.com, um, shameless plug, you can see kind of the beginnings of what we're doing. We went live with it, even though it doesn't have all of our content yet, um, just kind of as like, a beta test almost to make sure it's going to work. So if you go on there, you can see a handful of our shows in full and we're not even selling ads on it yet. So like if there's ads inserted, it's because they're producer ads. And eventually we will unfortunately have to add ads to it. Just, you know, keeping the bills paid on our end. But um, I don't think you have to justify that. I mean, I I think that (laughs) some people get really annoyed by it. And we debated for a long time before we started launching things, whether we should do like a paid service where we wouldn't have to do ads. But um, we decided it would be more dynamic to have it set up to have ads inserted. We can change them, move them around, etc. And it also offers us the opportunity to uh, promote things while people are watching. I don't know the way that it's set up on this app. We use um, we use an over the top system called Stream, which they're kind of just kind of developing as we go as well. And we're it, one of my coworkers lovingly puts it as we're building the plane while we fly it, and uh, <laughs> it's totally true. But we're working out the kinks, and yeah, you can check out what we've got so far at WatchHeartlandTV.com. And my show, more than the music, will be on there. Well, it's on there now mostly. So, yeah, we're just figuring out how to promote it and how to, you know, get the rest of our stuff up there. So <laughs> it's exciting times. I'll uh, I'll head over to the website and see kind of what's going on beta style and, and check out what you, what you guys got going on. I'm excited to to see that. Thank you for taking the time to do this with me. I'm grateful for you. Yeah, grateful for, you, for you as a friend I'm for you as well. And I'm sorry it took so long for us to get on here and do this thing. But I'm it's busy. all good. <laughs> come come back on with me when things progress for, for what you're doing. For sure, for sure I will. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Justin. The first track you heard was Dean Moriarty's Blues by the Drunken Hearts, and we leave you with another one of their songs titled Happy.